Hey Eurovision fans, the pre-party season has begun and we have a new number one in the Eurovision 2024 winning odds. We're going to check out the full list from bottom all the way up to the top and see who's been rising, who's been falling and who has momentum as we come ever closer to the rehearsals. So let's kiki. If you're new here, welcome, my name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So as I said in the intro, we have a new number one in the odds. We've actually also had the release of the qualifying odds and the top 10 odds. I'm gonna do those in a separate video. I haven't posted a video in a while. I just wanna get this up. So I wanna keep it kind of short so I can just get past that obstacle. And then I'll probably do a separate video for the top 10 and the qualifiers and any other new markets that are emerging. So the pre-party season has begun. We've already had one of our parties in Madrid, which I was at which I'll talk about a little bit later. And then this weekend we had a pre-party in Barcelona and today we have a pre-party in London. So lots of live performances, people getting information about how artists are live, what their vocals sound like in person, what are some of their staging concepts, their styling, what's their presence on stage. So this is kind of shaking things up quite a bit. Let's have a look at the bottom 12. We can see unfortunately still in the last one, Magar for San Marino. They were actually at Madrid. I thought they performed very well, did their song from this year and they did their song from Benedict fest last year but not having any of an impact nobody's willing to bet on them to win which i kind of understand in 36th place we still have moldova also not moving either i also saw her in madrid i have to admit the crowd was extremely muted throughout this performance a lot of people going to the toilet not particularly interested but enough she also performed her song from 2007 which came 10th and i think that actually kind of got a little bit of a better reception despite the fact it was seven, 17 years ago. So yeah, things aren't looking great for Moldova. They really need to pick things up if they even want to qualify, let alone win. In 34th place, we have quite a large dropper, Albania dropping from 23rd all the way down to 34th. So a few people placing bets on them after the English revamp came out, but since then just been dropping. I don't think anyone's been betting on Bessa to win since. I think again, you should be more interested in the qualification odds of this. Are Albania even gonna be able to qualify from the second slot in the running order? 33rd place, we've got Czech, it's Aiko singing pedestal with her revamp. She's moved up two places from 35th, still sitting at 251. These are decimal odds, by the way. If you want to turn them into fractional, 251 is 252 one. 32nd place, we have Luxembourg also moving up two spaces. I'm pretty pretty sure that Tally is going to be performing at the London party tonight. I don't think she performed in either the Spanish one. So we'll be interesting to see how she's going to do. She's had a small revamp to her song. Is she going to be bringing dancing? What kind of energy is she going to be bringing to her staging? But yeah, still way, way off. Luxembourg returning to the contest and immediately getting a win. 31st, we have Malta also moving up two spots. She had a pretty good performance in Madrid. She had two dancers with her, some nice choreography, some nice styling as well. It, it looked and sounded good. I don't know if it's big enough to qualify. She's gonna have to be very memorable because she's opening up that second semi-final. I don't know if they're there yet, but I would love Malta to pull through. But yeah, I think the more sensible part of me would say qualifying would be a big enough of a success already. Malta have never won Eurovision for it. They've come second twice, but not in recent years. Okay, in 30th place, we have another pretty big dropper. It's Azerbaijan dropping nine spaces. Nobody betting on them. I'm not sure if they're doing any of the pre-parties, but they haven't done any of them so far. So maybe we need to see a live performance. People need a little bit more reassurance before they'll even consider that. In 29th spot, we have Poland who've moved down two places from 27th. She also performed in Madrid. I really don't remember that much of it. I think my only memory is that it felt a little bit meek and it didn't really give me anything extra or new from what I'd seen in the music video or anywhere else. So yes, I don't blame people for not betting on this to win. In 28th place, we have a riser up four places is Germany from 32nd. I actually thought Isaac was very strong in the Madrid party. Very, very good vocals, really nice guy. I've seen quite a few interviews with him where his personality really shines. I don't know if the German delegation have the capacity or capabilities to somehow work that performance into a staging, but generally I don't associate the German delegation with staging elevation in general, other than 2018 with Michael Schulte. So, Look, he's got a great personality. The song is pretty solid. It's a radio-friendly song. I don't think this can win, but I, I do think that if this was, song was with a delegation who had a better track record of staging well, I think it would be higher. It's the type of song that could potentially do well with the jury. But still nice to see that he's risen four spots. In 27th place, we have Australia 
who've moved down one spot. No real news about them. I haven't, I don't think they've been at the pre-parties. And then finally in 26th place, we have Iceland. This is Harry Bjork singing Scared of Heights. She's dropped down eight places. Again, the reason that Iceland were so high in the first place was because of, because of Bashar Murad, who ended up not winning the Icelandic national final, Sanfa Kepning. And since then, Iceland have slowly been falling down. I reckon this will settle down the bottom with San Marino and Moldova by the time rehearsals are over. This was another artist who performed two songs like Magara and Natalia Barbu. First of all, she sang Je Ne Sais Quoi, which was her song from 2010, which came 19th, which is a Eurovision classic. And myself and the rest of the crowd went absolutely crazy. And then it was a very stark juxtaposition afterwards when she sang her entry for this year, Scared of Heights, and the crowd really just didn't give an F. It was a very flash response. Even though it's quite an upbeat, boppy song, most people just weren't feeling it or just didn't really care. A lot of people going to get drinks and going to the toilet. So really interesting to see that contrast between these two entries. I feel it's a little bit odd to return to the contest with something that's so significantly weaker than your first entry. So yes, I think Iceland are gonna continue to fall down the table. Okay, so let's zoom out and just take a look at this a bottom 12. Is there anything in this top 12 that I would bet on to win? Absolutely no. There would have to be some gigantic development or transformation to make me consider any of these. So it's worth checking out the qualifier markets for them, which I'll cover again, as, as I said in another video. Great to see Germany with a little bit of momentum though. Can they somehow keep that up? Somehow utilize Isaac's personality to climb farther up the table? Hopefully they're gonna have some staging. His, his staging in the national final just didn't exist. Okay, now let's go to the middle 15. So this is 11th down to 25th. And in 25th spot, we have another climber it's Denmark moving four spaces from 29th up to 25th Saba performed at Madrid I saw her. I thought she was very good nothing particularly wow or new the color palette was the same as the Melody Grand Prix staging from the Danish national final so she was wearing a white outfit there were white lights there was a little bit of smoke I think as well so I'm getting the impression that the Danish delegation is going to largely copy and paste they don't always copy and paste but it's usually 80 90 percent the same as what it was in Melody Grand Prix I think that's gonna be danger for them if they don't elevate this in some way, particularly in that first half of the second semi-final where we have so many female artists and so much female energy and you really are gonna to have to stand out being in the first half as well. So having said that, she performed very well. Glad to see that she is climbed up four spots. Hopefully she can keep that up or maybe there's something going on behind the scenes that's given some people a little bit of hope that she can elevate. Okay, in 24th spot, we have Cypress Cilia Capsis. So she's not been performing at the pre-parties yet, but I did see a video of her performing, I think presumably in Australia. I'd imagine there's some limitations on her because of her age. She, maybe it's an expense issue that she's not going. I just don't think that she's got the experience to win Eurovision to be per perfectly honest. In 23rd place, we have Spain moving up five spots from 28th to 23rd. Some very solid performances in the pre-parties, obviously with a lot of crowd support, giving a lot of energy. So that could have maybe just shown off the song in a particularly positive way. But again, great to see that people have a little bit of faith in Nebulosa from Spain. Now in 20 seconds place, we have a really surprising one for me, and that is Latvia Dons singing Hollow. He's risen up eight spots from 30th to 22nd. Now I went through all the line of odds to look, and it looks like someone's placed quite a large bet on him on William Hill, because all the other ones, he's kind of roughly the same. William Hill, for some reason, he's 67 to one. I'm not sure maybe what the reason for that is, but it looks like someone just plonked a bit of money on him. I really don't think that many people are betting this low down the table, because really there's not that much new information that's gonna make people go, wow, this can suddenly win after hearing the radio edit. So I think it's probably just like a small chunk of money. It's made him jump up. Still very happy for him. He seems like a really lovely guy. Again, I saw him performing at Madrid. He sounded pretty good. He came out in his blue surgical <laughs> medical outfit and he did a little bit of call and response to the crowd afterwards, which actually went down really, really well. People enjoyed that, I think, a little bit more than they did the actual song itself. Anyway, great to see Latvia moving up into 22nd, but again, Latvia's priority is qualifying. They haven't qualified in the last six years. Okay, in 21st place, we've got Estonia. This is Pull Up and Five Manus. They've moved up one spot into 21st. Should be a safish qualifier, but at the end of the day, they're a fun vibe. I think there's other countries in the final who are gonna do that better than them. So yeah, the question for me about Estonia is how can they out fun some things that are very very <laughs> much more fun than they are they're gonna have to come up with a staging solution to that I think which I didn't see in East Lao. in 20th place we have Serbia so Serbia did move up to 18th but now they're back down to 20th 
Really, really lovely performance in Madrid. I thought her vocals sounded very good. A lot of mystery and thunder. My issue with this is still the televote. How is that going to happen? If we look at the winner of Eurovision since 2009, when we have, which is when the televote and jury together started, the winner of Eurovision has always been top two of the televote other than 2015 with Mon Zemlov, who was third. He was seven points behind Russia. He always kind of had an inflated televote anyway. So you could kind of argue that he would probably have been second under normal circumstances. So basically it appears that you need to be top two of the televote. How is Serbia going to be top two of the televote? I have absolutely no idea, which is why I think they're 20th. This is not the 20th best song. I think it's much higher than that. But realistically, the televote question is so glaring I think a lot of people don't want to bet on it because of that, and I completely understand that. 19th place, we have Georgia, who've never been top eight in the contest ever. Some people seem to think that they can somehow turn never being top eight, six non-qualifications in a row into a win. I love the optimism. I would love if it happened. I would love if Georgia did win, but I don't think it's going to be this year. They've moved down two places from 17 down to 19. She did perform at Madrid, but unfortunately she's had a recent bereavement of her brother, which is very devastating. So she didn't sing her song. I felt, I think she felt maybe it just wasn't in the mood of the time. So she sang another song instead, which was more heartfelt ballad, beautiful vocals. I totally understand the sentiment. Losing her brother is obviously extremely traumatic. In 18th place, we have a big climber and that is Raven singing Veronica. I'm glad to see that this has been moving up. It was so low. I think this was down in the mid 20s for quite a long time. Now it's moved up seven spots from 25th up to 18th. Really lovely to see. I thought her performance in Madrid was quite mystical. Obviously, a pre-party show, it's quite static. We don't have dynamic angles. She didn't have any dancers with her. So it felt a little bit off for some parts, but in actual Eurovision, we are gonna have those camera cuts. We can have something weird happening. We can have dancers coming in. I think she did have one female dancer come towards her at the end of the Madrid party. Vocal sounded really, really good. She's got a fantastic mystical presence about her. So I'm glad to see that this is climbing up. I'm still a little bit concerned that this could be a shock non-qualifier from the first semi-final. I want to be wrong. I hope to be wrong. But it's nice to see that people are not even worried about non-qualifications. They're betting on Raven to win. In 17th, we have Armenia who've moved up two spots from 19th. This got a gigantic response from the pre-party crowd in Madrid. Why wow, they really went crazy. Now, having said that, many of them were drinking. <laughs> many of them are diehard Eurovision fans and they were in a kind of like clubby, dancey environment. Jacko, who, the female lead singer, is incredibly magnetic on stage and the smile on her face performing just absolutely came alive. Like she really, really loves being on stage performing this song. So that is something that could translate into a pretty decent televote. Still just overall, I don't see it getting up right to the top of the televote into the top two, as I said, which appears to be a pr prerequisite to win. And then the jury score as well, but this is something that could have the potential to do well in terms of the top 10 odds. It could be a bit of a surprise there if it gets a big televote. Maybe a really, really nice running order slot where it comes after some slow paced songs and it gives a little bit of energy. Her smile lights up the whole arena. That could be a moment. I definitely wouldn't bet on that to win though, I gotta be honest. Okay, in 16th place, we have my country. I'm so incredibly uh, happy to see that we're still so high on the odds. Staying put in 16th spot. I thought they were very good at the Eurovision pre-party. Great energy, really enjoy being on stage. No real new visual concepts on the back screen. It was just the music video. And then costume wise, it was something similar to what we've seen recently. These kind of very form fitting lace style black gothic feel with a bit of vintage. So I feel like that's what they're gonna go for on the stage with the white makeup as well. So no real new information here. So I wouldn't expect this to have jumped up, but the vocals were solid, so it didn't fall down either. The crowd had a very big response to the kind of raspy vocal towards the end. In 15th, we have Norway who are moving down one spot. Uh, they weren't in Madrid. They had a live on tape for some reason, so I presume that they weren't able to come. Very solid performance. I've seen they've done some performances in a church as well. Really atmospheric and cool. I'm seeing a lot of people talking about Gunnhild's vocal being quite Marmite. Some people love it, some people hate it. We saw that last year with Blanca Paloma. She had this style of vibrato, high flamenco note. I can't remember the name for it, but I know that some people really felt like that was nails on a chalkboard. I loved it. But yeah, other people really didn't. I wonder, is that going to be a slightly similar thing with Gunnhild this year? I don't think it's as extreme. I haven't seen as many people saying that they don't get this or don't like her vocal. But I think 
if it does have that divisiveness, I don't really see how it can win if it's putting a lot of people off. And with the jury as well, if people are ranking it low because they don't like her style of singing, this style of traditional sheep herding singing from Norway, I, I think it's gonna be very hard for, for them to win. Finland moving up one spot into 14th. I love the optimism from some people that they somehow think that this can get through the jury. The jury is gonna mangle this, I think. I do think it can do pretty well in the televote. I still don't think it'll win the televote. You'd have to think with its reduced jury score, it needs to win the, the televote to go through. This is Windows 95 Man who opened the show in Madrid. Really, really fun and high energy. Vocal sounded pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I just don't see how this can make it. 13th place, we have Look Telk from Sylvester Belt in Lithuania. Lithuania staying put in 13th place. Again, a really nice performance in Madrid. I thought he sounded good. He was doing his leg kicks. I really, really enjoyed this. I felt more confident about it qualifying after watching the live show but can it move up into the win? We'll have to wait until rehearsals, I think. We need to see, maybe see something a little bit new or get something that kind of just sparks a bit of a surge up the table. Okay, in 12th place, we have the UK who've moved down one spot from 11th. Unfortunately, I couldn't see this at Madrid. I had to go catch a flight, so I had to leave before, but I heard good things about it. Again, I would be very surprised if the UK won this year. I'm personally rooting for Oli to be on the left side of the table. That is my goal, and have a really, really solid performance and encourage this streak of fantastic artists for the UK next year. I really do feel like winning is totally off the table. I don't think the song, I think the song is excellent, but I don't think it's wow enough. So yeah, for me, this is just, uh, I can't see it happening. In 11th place, we have Austria clean singing We Will Rave. She's moved up one spot doing a swap with Ali. Another one I missed from the Madrid people. Unfortunately, they left all the songs I really wanted to see until the end. I, I missed a lot of these songs that are at the top, apart from one of them, which I'll mention later. I watched the video on YouTube. Her vocals sound pretty good. Looked, the performance looked quite static. I don't think she wanted to give away too many of her dance moves. Me personally, I just can't see this winning. I just think it is not innovative or new enough. I think it's enjoyable. I think some people are really gonna like this, but yeah, winning for me is just outside of the question. But I am expecting a very professional stage show. Okay, so let's have a zoom out and look at that middle 15. Who are the big climbers and fullers? We can see Slovenia and Latvia going up seven and eight spots respectively based off of pre-parties and possibly some other things as well. Spain also going up plus five, having performed at both Barcelona and Madrid. Georgia losing a little bit of momentum moving down two spots, but no massive big droppers here. Okay, now let's go to the top 10. In 10th spot, we have Sweden, who'd actually moved down to 12th, I think, and then moved back up to 10th. Marcus and Martinez singing Unforgettable. Sweden is very much a known entity. What we get in Malmö is pretty much what we got in Melody Festival and Final. That is what Sweden tends to do. They copy and paste. In fairness, the staging in Melody Festival is pretty incredibly amazing. I don't blame them for not changing it. It would be nice to see something a little bit new just to get a little bit more of a media buzz. I think it's hard to kind of get headlines when people already know what to expect when they see rehearsals. You can pick up momentum in rehearsal week if people see something new and wow, Sweden aren't gonna get that. So I feel like this could potentially be their peak unless countries above them are flopping and moving down below them. Okay, in ninth spot, we have Israel who've moved down one spot from eighth. She's not performing in any of the pre-parties that I'm aware of. so. Uh, I think this will only gain a bit of momentum when we come to rehearsal week and we see what the staging is gonna be. Has potential for a big televote, but I don't think the song is strong enough to do very well with the jury. In eighth place, we have Greece, who've moved down who've moved down one spot from seven. Another artist who wasn't at Madrid. I have to admit, I'm struggling to see if this, how this could win as a song. I do think we're gonna get some interesting staging. And I really enjoy that Greece are elevating and starting to build a new identity. But yeah, I'm just not getting winner vibes from this. I'm less inclined to think it has a chance to win than before but I'm hoping that rehearsals can change things around. I feel like this year is really, really open. We have so much movement in the top. I do hope that some of these countries ranked between seventh and 15th, one or two of them can really up their game and shoot up the odds because they've got something really incredible or dynamic. Greece being an internal selection song, there's a little bit more scope for a surprise. Obviously the songs that won national finals, we kind of have a rough idea what their stage is gonna be. Whereas Marina Sadi has got a little bit more opportunity to have some cards or tricks or dice up her sleeve. Okay, in seventh place, we have France, who've moved up three spots. Now, Slimane did perform at the Barcelona pre-party. I believe he sang the song in Spanish as well. He's doing that thing still where he stands away from the mic. Some people are getting quite sick of it. They think it's a little bit of a gimmick. 
I gotta admit though, I gotta go back to my first reaction to when that happened and I thought it was wow. I admit now seeing it the third, fourth, fifth time, it's less wow. But at the end of the day, it's a little bit irrelevant because the majority of people watching the Eurovision final are gonna be watching it for the first time and the only time. So seeing him sing three meters away from the mic is gonna wow them. I think this has definitely got the possibility of winning the jury. I said that way back in November when it was released. I'm sticking with it now. His vocals are just absolutely not exceptional. If they make some good decisions now, they do have to make it exciting and interesting. And that allows his vocal to do extremely well with the jury. If he has a very, very strong jury score and the televote is split amongst three or four people, I can see how that is a very long shot but a possibility for Sliman to win. So yeah, seventh in the odds makes sense to me because yeah, potential jury winner. Again, in sixth spot, we have Musti for Belgium. They're staying put in sixth with a 4% chance of winning. I've seen a kind of mixed reception to his performances in the pre-parties. Again, this was one I had to leave for, unfortunately. I did watch it on YouTube. I thought it was pretty good. Nice intensity on stage. Vocals not perfect, but really these pre-parties aren't about having perfect vocals. They're about performing for people, having fun. There's a different focus than there is as opposed to your vision, which is the competition. You aren't competing in a free party. You aren't gonna get any points for singing perfectly. So yeah, I think he was focused more on delivering in terms of theatrics and enthusiasm and energy. And I thought he did well from that aspect. In fifth spot, we have Joost for the Netherlands. Now he did move up to fourth, but he moved back down again. I still think this has the potential to win. I think that at this point in time, I feel like it's between Joost and the country that's in first place who we're coming to later. I know I do understand that there is the jury question, but Twan van der Nieuwen Westerhuizen, whose name I can't say, who was the executive producer from 2021 to 23 and is now the Dutch head of delegation, is on board. He's going to know the limitations and the rule. Hopefully he'll know how to work the system. Joost has been doing so much promotion work for this. It's crazy. I think his televote score is going to be really, really high. This is charting in Spotify in a lot of places in Europe. So yeah, um, I feel like this is the Talbot winner at this point in time. Personally, I think Netherlands wins the Talbot. And if you're winning the Talbot, like I said, the winner of Eurovision is used within the top two of the Talbot. So it'll be Joost against somebody, whoever came second in the Talbot. Unless this is the year that bucks the trend and third or fourth win the Talbot, totally possible because things feel so open this year. Patterns are patterns. And I think that Joost and somebody else is a very plausible final two. In fourth place, we have Ukraine, who've moved down two spots from second down to fourth. They've been on the pre-party circuit as well. I missed this one, unfortunately. I'm still not getting the winner vibes, but Ukraine have absolutely incredible staging. So I'm expecting this to have some real wow visual moments. And then I'll feel that it's high placing would be a little bit more justified. Okay, in third place, we have Italy. This was our runaway winner at one point. I remember this was really, really far ahead. People were starting to talk about how this is kind of running away with the contest. Not anymore. Angelina Mango has dropped down to third place, just showing how open the contest is this year. I think we've had six or seven different people leading. I remember the UK were leading at one point, so were Israel. This was definitely leading. So was Ukraine, so was Croatia, and also our current number one. So lots of different countries sharing the the winning spot this year. Very, very exciting. Looks like Angelina's a little bit more invested than some of her predecessors. She's actually attended Barcelona and Madrid P parties, which is something kind of unheard of for the Italian artists. They usually don't go to that. So she's getting involved. She's doing interviews. I feel like she's really invested and she wants to do well and represent her country. So that could be something that differentiates her from some of her predecessors. For example, in 2022 with Mahmoud and Blanco, I felt that their final performance was quite unpolished, lacking a little bit of rehearsals. So I don't feel like we're gonna get the same thing from Angelina. I think she's working with a lot of top designers, choreographers, she's really investing a lot of talent and money and time into this. So yes, this can definitely win. And I also see this as being a Netherlands 2019 type of winner where she comes second in the title and then top three in the jury and then Everyone else is split. We have some songs which are very televote baity, some songs which are very jury baity, and she's the consistent person who comes through. So I can definitely see her winning, and especially if she brings an elegance, a beautiful editorial style to the stage as well. So this definitely still has winner potential, a huge fan favorite. She's very far ahead in the Eurovision scoreboard app, which is a large 
fan app where fans can vote for their top 10s of all 37 songs. Okay, in second place with a 15% chance of winning, we have Croatia, which was the number one in my last video on March 19th. He's got a 15% chance of winning. He's he's dropped from 3.3 decimal down to 4.5. I unfortunately missed his performance in Madrid, but I heard that it went down extremely well. Apparently his stage presence is getting better and better. He's getting more experience. He's getting more confident. Really, really great decision that he is doing the pre-parties this year because I think it's really gonna help him. I do feel like countries should have some sort of a strategy when they're doing the pre-parties. Why are they doing them? For what purpose? Is it just to meet fans? or is it to get a bit of experience? And for him, I feel like every show that he does, he's gonna get more energized, more confident, and that's definitely gonna help him and Mama. I feel like that is the thing I'm the most concerned about is how is Baby Lasagna gonna be on the big stage with a lot of home pressure. There's a lot of people in Croatia who really, really, really wanna win for the first time under the Croatian flag. They won in 89 under Yugoslavia with a ban from Zagreb, but it was a Yugoslavian flag. So there's a lot of home pressure here. How is he gonna be able to deal and manage with that? It looks like he's managing it very well so far. What's the final stage show gonna be like? How is he gonna be in the final week? Are the delegation gonna be able to protect him? This again has broad appeal for both jury and televote. This is another person I think could be up there with Yost. If Yost is top two of the televote, I can definitely see Baby Lasagna also being there with him. Or we could have a situation where the top four in the televote are all really, really, really close. So as I said, normally it's the top two, but fourth place might only be a few points behind first place. And that really just blows things up and kind of gets rid of that pattern. And finally, our number, new number one, I've, I've gone so long throughout the video without saying this country's name, is Switzerland. Switzerland have absolutely exploded up the odds. In my very first video on March 5th, they were fifth. In my last video, they were fourth, and now they've moved it to first. Luckily, I did see this in Madrid pre-party. I actually waited for this before I left, so I had to go catch a flight. I waited as long as possible because I wanted to see Nemo, and I'm so glad that I did. This was really, really magical. It really blew my socks off. The vocals from Nemo were just exceptional. This pop rock falsetto swirling bond moment in the bridge is absolutely pure magic. Now, if they can have a real wow visual moment with this, I think this is, could be not a runaway, but I think that this definitely can win. They're working with Frederick Rudman, who did Karia staging last year for Finland. I'm hoping that they go for something big and wow and wonderful. We know that Nemo's styling is probably gonna be something very androgynous, which could potentially draw a lot of media attention. We know what happened in 2014 with Conchita Verse, how much media hype that got and that arguably led to a swell of support for Conchita. Could there be a similar thing with Nemo? I'm not sure, but I do feel like the song and the artist and the vocals alone are worthy of being top of the odds. I think that extra storyline could even just add even more momentum to Nemo. I actually posted in mid-March on Twitter that I think that this is the song that could win. I'm sticking with that at this moment in time. As I said, I feel like it's gonna be Switzerland and Netherlands. And then I have Croatia as kind of like a little bit of a question mark based on how he performs. But yeah, Switzerland and Netherlands for me are the main two that make the most sense to me when I close my eyes and think who is holding the trophy. I, I love that it's so open this year. I feel like Ukraine and Italy and Croatia and even France can totally be in the mix as well. Belgium potentially, I'm feeling less inclined towards Belgium recently, I gotta be real. I think they're gonna have to really massively elevate, go for some really cool avant-garde camera cuts if they wanna stay in the mix. But yeah, this feels very open, very exciting to see that our leader of the scoreboard only has a 24% chance of winning. Last year with Loreen, she was at 42, 43, 44, so it was a lot more kind of obvious who was potentially gonna win. This year, I feel like we're gonna have another new one, number one at some point and another new number one. But my money at this point in time is still with Nemo, but I just love how exciting it is at the top and how unpredictable this year is gonna be. It's gonna be a very exciting grand final. Okay, let's have a little zoom out on the top 10 and we can see the big climber there is Switzerland moving from fourth up to first, currently at a 24% chance of winning and also France making a big gain as well. 
Ukraine, the biggest losers, moving down two spots. So that is an update on the odd situation for the outright winner of Eurovision 2024. As I said, hopefully I can do another video talking about the qualifier odds and the top 10 odds separately. I'm already seeing, I can see a little timer here saying that this video already is gonna be very long. So right, I made the right decision to do them separately. What did you think about the winner's odds? Who are you betting on? Who do you think could be a little bit of a dark horse to scream up into the top 10? Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you to Alicia and Megan for supporting me on Buy Me Coffee. No new donations on PayPal, but I'll leave links to you in the description down below if you want to support the channel. And of course, thank you to my patrons for patronizing me from all around the world. On my Patreon, you can get the original audio and visuals when I get copyrighted. You can get some updates on upcoming videos, some early releases, and you can be part of our My Efficient Scoreboard group. So go check that out if you're a fan. But of course, thanks so much just for watching and maybe leaving a like and maybe sharing the video. And thanks so much for watching. See you in the video version and last video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.